watching BBN Tonight, presented by UK Federal Credit Union. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. It's one of the greatest what ifs in recent Kentucky basketball history. What if there had been an NCAA tournament in 2020? That team was rolling by the end of conference play, but had its season cut short because of the start of the SEC tournament. Now Nate Sestina is back in Lexington and he sat down with Anna to talk about his time with the program and what he's been up to since then. What is it like to be back in Lexington? It's great. Driving in, I kind of got this like nostalgic feeling of like, you know, I'm back home and I had that, that sense of feeling of being home and, uh, and I loved it. Like just driving in from Cincinnati, I was like, this is, it's starting to feel real. You were only here for about a year, right? Mm -hmm. But it still means so much to you. You you still really connected with it here. Yeah. Looking back, being able to put it in perspective, it's you know it's been a couple years. What would you say your time at Kentucky means to you? Honestly, I mean, it, it really kind of transformed me and put me in a position that I'm in now. Um, I had a very successful senior year at Bucknell, and a lot of hard work and time went into that. But I know I needed to make you know another jump and be able to put myself into a position to play at a higher level professionally and. Um, coming here and working with the coaching staff and the strength and conditioning and Jeff, uh, the athletic trainer, really kind of propelled me into that and, and it means a lot and it's not just the basketball people, it's everybody. We were just talking about with Chris and Sanford and the volleyball people and Madison kind of introduced me to everybody there. So uh, it, it is one big family here and I feel that every time I come through the doors. The year you were at Kentucky was COVID year. Yeah. Is there anything you feel like you missed out on because of that? I know the tournament, you know, it stopped yeah. early, but like what other experience do you feel like you didn't get of the Kentucky experience because of that? Definitely Keeneland. I, every time I say I miss Keeneland, everybody's reaction is the same. Uh, the Kentucky Derby, um, I was really looking forward to that. And then the NCAA tournament, that was like the biggest reason I came here. And during that whole grad tra transfer process, I was like, listen, I, you can go and transfer these schools and play and be the guy, but I was like, I want to win, and like that's kind of something that I take with me everywhere I go, and I wanted to be a champion, and we ended up winning the SEC, which was great, and then get an SEC tournament, and everything gets shut down, and I was like, there's, there's no way. And, uh, Coach Cal fought for me to try to get an extra year, and then, of course, the next year, everybody gets an extra year, so I was like, man, I would have come back 100%, and he and I talked about it, and I was like, I, I know that I needed to fine-tune some things to continue to make that next step, so... I'm, I'm fine tuning everything still, but um, no, I, I think Keeneland and the Kentucky Derby were two big ones. Um, I'm a big hunter and fisher, so maybe oh. trying to find something like that, especially for spring gobbler, trying yeah. to get out of the woods a little bit. But I don't know anything else that people from Kentucky do. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure. Just the whole experience. And the bourbon. I did do a bourbon tour. Okay, you did a little to. bourbon. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. It was I good. was making sure that you were qualified. <laughs> you said yes. Okay, good. Now, how much do you keep in contact with people who were on your team with you at Kentucky? It's not like everyday texting, but like uh, social media helps out a lot, especially yeah. when I'm overseas and those guys are here. Emmanuel and Tyrese, I, I message them throughout the year just after big games and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's so awesome to see that because like when I met them, they were 17. Well, Emmanuel was 18 or 19. But like Tyrese was 17 years old, 18 years old, and like now he's a grown man. I'm like, <laughs> wait a second, this, you know? Yeah. It's, but it's amazing because I know how hard those guys work, and I can't even imagine what they're like now as professionals. Because like that is now their job. They don't have school. Yeah. No more classes. What's it like watching them? Like in the it. finals, in the playoffs? It's to see Tyrese when he, had, I think he had 38 yeah. or something like that. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I was like, I practice with you. I gave you rides places. Like this is nuts. <laughs> but I love it, and it, it it's. As like a guy who came in a little bit older, I, I tried to take that older brother, but not like overbearing, mm -hmm. but like older brother role. And I'm the youngest of five, so like I've never been an older brother. So it was uh, it was cool for me to like take them under my wing, but they they knew what they were gonna do and everything. But just try to be a good role model and teach them in ways of like college athletics. And then now they're big time pros and I love it. When you left UK, just walk us through your journey. What went on? Uh, you've been playing overseas. How did that come to be? During that like awkward March and April where everybody was like, what's going on? Uh, I stayed in Lexington. Wasn't able to get in here or anything to work out. So I kind of did like the at home hit workouts on YouTube, go for long oh, wow. walks. They're not fun. I, <laughs> I hate them. I hate burpees. I hate, I'm like, I'd rather just figure something, a pull up bar or something like that. Um, so I stayed here. I kind of went through that agent process of uh, hiring an agent and that's like getting recruited at, yeah. at, like, for college. It's Stressful. a little overwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I ended up signing with uh, Calvin Andrews and Omar Samhan from Clutch Sports. And it was, for me, that was a big step because that Calvin and Omar are big time guys. And I was like, man, I don't want to get lost in the shuffle. And mm -hmm. 
um, I've kind of been like an under the radar, underrated kid, and Calvin's like, no, like we're gonna help you out. And Kenny Payne, um, I, I love KP. KP. Uh, he actually helped me out with that process. So him and Joel, uh, Joel Justice, and so I was like, you know what, I trust these guys, and I went out to California. Uh, my buddy that I graduated from Buck Bucknell. Um, his boss had a ranch, like a winery. Like he owned like this big, it was amazing, uh, big winery. And he built a full court gym and like a weight room and all this stuff. And was like, you can come stay here. Like me and my wife are cool. It's right outside of Sacramento. So I flew into San Francisco, stayed there for about two weeks with Matt and his family, and then drove up there and worked out there like the entire summer. What's your message to BBN, Nate? Just keep believing, honestly. Keep trusting Coach Cal. He's gonna figure it out. He's got a good class coming in. And as a guy who's been through it, just keep, keep trusting it because it's, it's going to come out on top. Trust the process. Shout out to Tyrese. Yeah. <laughs> for the time, and you heard him mention Madison. Yes, uh, for all of you keeping track at home, he's still dating former UK volleyball player and national champion Madison Lilly. We stand them. Uh, our producer Maggie made me say that, by the way. Uh, more BBN tonight after this. <laughs>